All right, JHK here for the All Star, and join me right now is lightweight prospect, the Blazing Sensation, Justin O'Connor. Justin, man, I appreciate you taking the time today. How are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good right now. I'm feeling, say, definitely the best I felt in a good four, five weeks. You know, I've been recovering from uh, bunion surgery. Uh, took a step back from MMA, or at least where I'm at right now in my career, to go and heal up some of the injuries. Hopefully, for better results in the future. So, um, just even the ability to walk again has been awesome. But um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm feeling really good right now. How are you doing? Good, good, man. Good. Thank you so much for asking. Let's talk about the bunion. Like, how did that end up developing? Is, is it is it a a result of too much or a lot of training, or is it just like something that you just developed over time? You don't even know how. All of the above. All of the uh, above. So, <clears throat> how to start? So, bunions are genetic. Um, my apparently they skipped generations as well my grandmother had them and then my mom didn't have them but then of course your boy got them so you know carrying the uh family legacy isn't too easy <laughs> but you know us Malaysians know how to make it uh, how to get it done so uh, <laughs> i think i first noticed them when i developed flat feet and uh, when i first started martial arts uh, especially jujitsu um they started out as like uh, I guess enlarged like big toes so the the toe itself didn't look too too bad it just looked like you know it was a little red you know might have gotten thumped or something during uh, grappling but you know otherwise don't worry about it however fast forward like you know six seven years later that's when it really started to get bad so I'm 22 23 you know definitely feeling good in the MMA scene training has been good I feel like you know um Especially when you start eating healthy as an MMA fighter, you really notice the difference in your um, physical performance and, like, what you're able to go and get accomplished during camp. So when you're feeling, like, that on top of the world and then to suddenly be, like, you know, twisting on a punch and then feeling like your whole foot's, like, seizing up, you're like, uh, you know, you're, it definitely kind of catches you off guard, but... Um, I think when I was first posed with the question of whether I wanted to get this done or not... <laughs> I'm not going to lie. At first, uh, thinking about it at first, I was definitely like, you know what? No, this is, you know, a year away from MMA. You know, what are you thinking? Like, you know, you're in good uh, shape right now. Things have been going good. But, you know, getting to fight, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that later. It's been a little bit difficult. But um, at this point right now, I think it's best for me to be able to focus on uh what I can do right now in order to set myself up for the future. So one of the, one of those things happened to be bunion surgery. So I decided to get the operation done at the end of July. Um, man, it's definitely been a journey since then. Definitely different than the MMA scene, but um, now being able to see the result of what it's like to have a normal foot again, because I didn't just get the bunion done. I also got my um, flat feet fixed as well. So on my left side, my feet used to be flat like this, but now they're like arched like this. They literally had to break the bone back just to be able to get it back in place. Um, it was uh, it was definitely a time, but I can definitely feel the difference in the power in my foot versus prior. I guess, you know, having my right side to go and compare. But um, I'm excited to see what the future holds, man. I mean, especially now that uh, I've seen a little bit of what I can do with a normal foot, you know, just having like a normal pair of feet. You know, seeing the difference there. Um, I'm excited to see what will happen. So, you know, we'll see. But in the meantime, right now I'm focusing on school, being able to go and hopefully get a, math, uh, a major in mathematics and a minor in compu uh, computer science. So, uh, you know, at that point, if I can get it, the world will be my oyster. But uh, until then, we bought wait our time uh, and uh, hopefully, you know, keep on living those good vibes you know what i'm saying <laughs> unfortunately it's backwards but all good vibes is what we read so for sure for yeah. sure and uh yeah i saw that you did put your your education on hold a few years back to pursue mma and now you're back in school is it like a, a online online courses basically online schooling so it's funny that you say that. Um, I decided to make the jump back into school at the start of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, man, that was quite the time, right? I mean, one minute we're all sitting there thinking, oh, you know, it's only going to be a couple weeks, right? Pandemic can't be too bad. And then next thing you know, here we are, like, you know, almost two years later. It's crazy. But um, 
when I decided to make the jump, I decided that what I wanted in life was to be able to go and set myself up, not just in the immediate future, but also the long-term future as well. So once I decided to kind of like mature with my thinking a little bit, rather than kind of, you know, getting caught up in the moment, that's when the turn back to school became pretty easy. Um, when I first got into school, uh, I guess like at the collegiate level, uh, I was 18, and honestly, growing up, man, I didn't have a lot of self-confidence. Like, I, it was really easy for me to put myself down, and I won't lie, sometimes it's still kind of like that, but at that age, I felt like that shit was, like, really... Oh, I'm sorry, can I swear on here? Yeah, or yeah, is yeah. That not... it's all good. Oh, okay, cool, cool. <laughs> um, I felt like I was kind of, like, um, crippling myself in a way, you know what I mean? Like, I was scared of seeing what success would look like, and when you're kind of stuck in that mindset, you're not able to go and really perform at your best, especially at the um, scholastic level. So um, school didn't work out the first round, but going back and having the right uh, mindset, you know, being confident, you know, a little bit more mature and uh, more, I guess, uh, snug in my skin, if that makes sense. Um, I felt like I was really able to go and like zone, hone in on what I needed to get done and, uh, ultimately ultimately charge forward um you know certain uh, certain subjects like comp sci still elude me um the subject of coding is a whole other you know dimension that i'm not even going to get into but um i'm confident that over time even if i don't know how to get something done in the moment i'll figure out a way so sure. i think fighters are the the best at that you know what I mean? They're the best at figuring things out on their own. Um, what What is your training looking like nowadays? You know, you're recovering from the foot surgery. Mm -hmm. Are you back in 100% or are, are you slowly, gradually getting your foot? Because sometimes, you know, fighters, they, they don't listen to doctors. Ah, uh, you know, I would <laughs> definitely be lying if I said I wasn't there with them, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I would say I'm at like 75, 80% right now. Um, the foot itself, I feel like has... Oh, definitely within the last like two to three weeks uh, strengthened up. I feel like I'm able to put more pressure on it daily. Um, kicking off it has gotten stronger as well. There are subtle differences in the way I move now. So I kind of got to take that into account before I start like, you know, um, sprinting at whatever I'm doing. I got to kind of give myself the muscle memory of how things should be forming before I end up, you know, trying to go from zero to 100. So Humbling myself has been a little bit difficult there, but training regiment now is kind of based off of um, what I like to call like a Rocky montage of sorts, you know, mm -hmm. what doesn't seem like a lot in the moment eventually builds up over time as I end up seeing like, you know, where was I at like, you know, a week ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, you know, so seeing that evolution has been nice, um, but as far as rolling and stuff, man, I can't be doing that for probably another like ideally for me i like to you know be more of a uh, optimist here two to three weeks but we're probably looking at like three to four weeks so um you know i, I think the main concern right now is just like being able to go through all the um motions that a foot should be able to and unfortunately we can't just do that right now so it sucks waiting, but you got to do what you got to do if you want to stay in this long term, right? I mean, it's easy to go and get caught up in what everybody else is doing, but it's it's definitely a more mental battle when it comes to, you know, focusing on your own journey and doing what's best for you in the moment. So I'm just going to trust this journey. We're going to keep on marching forward, meet awesome people like you, and, you know, fucking have an awesome time in the meantime, you know? Yeah, for sure. And, uh, yeah, man, from a young age, I noticed that you've been traveling to like some of the best gyms in the world did you start at uh lausanne mma or were you is that yeah so yes actually um uh, i guess it's just easier to go and tell my martial arts story mm -hmm. so at six years old i started karate um i actually started at the gym like 10 minutes away from me right now so it's always cool to be able to pop in there uh shout out to craig's Kemple karate academy you guys are where it's at um but yeah, no, I was in, uh, I would say, strictly stand-up martial arts from the age of 6 to 11. Um, I went through regular um, regular karate, uh, Shidokan karate, uh, a little bit of Taekwondo. But then at the age of 13 is when I adjusted to uh, jiu-jitsu for the first time. Well, actually, that was the first year I started jiu-jitsu and wrestling. So it was definitely a double whammy coming from, you know, 
go or I should say going from a stand up background to a ground background. That's a whole different story right there. You know, you think, oh, you know, because you've had years of sparring, you know, kicking, punching that, you know, what's going on down there. Hell no. It's a it's a mess down there, man. It's like a hundred piece puzzle that, you you know, you think you've got and eventually you get the hundred and then they're like, all right, here's your blue belt, you know, and then they give you a thousand piece puzzle. And that's perfect. <laughs> crazy man i tell you this game's crazy but um that's one of the things i really love about it you know um i had to get humbled at first man i had to get so humbled so i'm glad that uh we got this interview i don't think i've told this story to anybody in a while um <laughs> when i first started jujitsu i remember the day very clearly it was seven o'clock at night on a tuesday my dad was like oh you know we're gonna go and check out this gym it's gonna be a good time he's like you know you see that mma stuff we're gonna give it a try i'm like oh, i don't know you know those guys look pretty crazy i mean uh, i feel like i'm strong but not that strong he's like no i'll be fine so we go and check out this jujitsu gym and there's like this like 40, 50 year old Asian lady uh, running the, I want to say like seven, eight o'clock class or something. She's got a couple of white belts on the mat. And then she's like, oh, you want to hop in? Go ahead. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, I put on one of their geese. It's like two times thicker than like my normal geese. So I was like, well, okay, this is already weird, but all right, it's cool. Um, and then I started like, uh, I think we were going through like guard positions and stuff. So we were doing some like guard retention and uh, guard changes and whatnot. And, um, when it came to actual sparring, that's when I think we, or actual rolling, that's when I think I faced the most tr uh, trouble. Because mm. I didn't know what the heck was going on down there. I felt like I was drowning. Like, when people say jiu-jitsu is the ocean and I am the shark, they truly mean that. Because mm. when you first start, you are you don't know what's going on. People are passing your guard left and right. You know, you're getting submitted this way. You're getting neck chokes this way. Like, my neck was super red at the end of it. I remember, like, at that age, too, I was very awkward with, like, my body. So, like, the thought of rolling with a girl, I was like, oh, no, I can't do it. You know, my hands are supposed to go here. No, I can't do it. It's very disrespectful, you know. But, um, yeah, I think once I was able to get past that first day, everything after that wasn't as bad. So, um, once I started jiu-jitsu, that was probably one of my, I would say, hallmarks of my childhood that I really felt like grounded me into the sport but not even into the sport into like the guy that I am today like when it comes to the confidence that I've gotten from the sport and you know my abilities and what I've learned to do just through you know being the hammer and the nail mm -hmm. um, it's truly taught me a lot about the reflections between jiu-jitsu and life like whether that means you know you're doing really well, you're on top, you're passing, you know, positions, you're getting submissions, you know, you're flustering your opponent, those type of things, versus when you're the nail, you're getting flustered, you know, your guard's getting passed, uh, maybe you're not able to hold position, you're getting submitted, like, the reflection between the two, I feel like I've really gotten a good feel for. I, I, I kind of feel like I haven't at the same time, too, though, because you feel like the more you get to know, the less you know at the same time, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um i don't know man i feel like over time i've just gotten a good feel of martial arts and what kind of journey i want to go on and as long as i kind of have that mentality of you know again if i don't know what i'm going to do right now as far as solutions go i'll eventually know mm -hmm. so um i don't know if that answered the initial question of what uh you know, of how I got into the sport or how I got into the different gyms. But um, as far as uh, I, I should probably start from the different gyms, sorry. Um, so I initially started at MMA Lab. Um, that was probably the first big gym I was at. Um, and I got to say, when I was going there for college, it well, going there and doing, um, I guess, my freshman year of college, it was nice in the fact that I was able to kind of see firsthand what it was like to be a pro what it was like at that level but at the same time it was kind of difficult because I felt like because I was still in college because I still had like low self-confidence before I really started getting into MMA um, I wasn't able to take advantage of the moment while I could you know what I mean like take full advantage of all the opportunities that I had and because of that I feel like 
part of me wishes I could go back and, you know, change how I train there and, you know, been like, oh, you know, uh, don't be so shy about your, uh, your abilities. You can do stuff, you know, like just be the uh, big brother for me that I needed. But um, no, it's OK. I, I, I really enjoyed the experience their experiences that I had there, um, you know, whether they be, you know, super critical to my um, uh self-confidence or super critical towards like my MMA journey or not, you know, all interactions are good interactions. Um, so I started there and then I went back to Boston, uh, worked there for half a year. But while I was working there, I was also training at Lausanne. So I would say my first true experience of like, um, what it's like to go against the Rocky came from Boston gyms. And that was just like a guy who no matter what you hit him with would keep charging forward. And I got to say that mindset was found by everybody at Lozons, like just absolute killers everywhere. Um, initially MMA nights were Tuesday, but I guess they've kind of switched up the schedule now. Um, but Saturday is the real day you want to get in there because if you're ever in town, you know, and you end up going there on a Saturday morning, man, you are going to get two full mats of absolute killers just going after it. Um, you'd really be surprised the uh, range level as far as like not only skill, but also like power. Like you can go against some guys that are like, you know, throwing around pillows. It's not so bad. You know, you're slipping, you're dodging, maybe you get hit by one, eh, no problem. And then you get some guys in there that are just like, stuffing bowling balls in their boxing gloves before they're putting them on. I'm telling you, like, these guys are just absolute tanks. But no matter who you go against, you always feel like they're going against you with good spirits, you know? I mean, obviously, you know, there's going to be the occasional partner that you feel like, you know, things might end up escalating more than you'd like. But for the most part, when you have a gym that is full of respectful, honorable fighters, there's not going to be any problems like that, you know? In MMA, those kind of people... Uh, generally tend to get rooted out just because if you can't end up putting your ego aside for the sport, you're not going to last long. Simple as that. So that was a good experience there. Um, let's see. I From there, after I saved up enough money, moved to New Mexico. Man, that, I would say, really kick-started my MMA career. Not only, uh, I would say, based off of the opportunities I had, but also because of the experience of what it was like to live on the Southwest. I mean, yes, I lived in Arizona, but I was also still kind of in that, like, shy um, uh, school kid, like, uh, role, I guess I kind of put myself in. But when I was able to have more of a free range, like, uh, MMA uh, experience, I grew so much in the sport. Um, initially, after working, I bought myself six months of um, uh, straight training fees, but I decided after six months, I'm like, oh, okay, listen. I got to stay here. Like the things are just way too good. So uh, I got a job out there at a cafe that honestly was one of my favorite cafes. Oh, actually, no, I don't want to say one of my is my favorite cafe in Albuquerque because, man, they got this uh, amazing dish. They call it the sirloin hash. It's a mix of uh, sirloin steak, hashed potatoes. You got some rosemary thyme. Uh, well, excuse me. They're seasoned with uh, rosemary, thyme, um, salt, pepper, you get a little bit of olive oil in there, you just mix it up, and then you end up getting little bits of bacon in there, along with onions, sizzle it all up. Oh my gosh, just absolutely amazing. Made me fall in love immediately. I'm like, as soon as I ended up getting a job there, I'm like, you don't even have to pay me any money, just like, pay me in sirloin hash, and then we'll call it even. So, uh, actually, I got in trouble multiple times there, because I would end up like, you know, upselling the sirloin hash, because, you know, I'm I'm upselling you right now. Um, I would sell, upsell it too much to the point where my boss would be like, listen, we don't have any more. Like, you need to stop. And I'd be like, oh, man, that, that means I can't have any after the shift. Like, oh, it, was, it was definitely a time. Um, but besides the good vibes from work, I also got a lot of really good vibes from training. I like to call it, the, uh, when I was training at Jackson Wink, I like to call it what it was, uh, I like to call it the... MMA Disney World experience in that you would get fighters from all over the world flying in. So you would have all these different styles and all these different personalities coming in. And it really was a uh, 
pirate ship kind of experience you know what i mean because you know we're all here we're all getting grimy we're all you know um getting ready for fights you know some some of us are going hard you know other people are going even harder you know people are bleeding all over the place no just playing uh, so there, there's just like minimal blood um but uh, just the experience of having that camaraderie with other people who are after the same goal i tell you like I think I really fell in love with MMA at that point when I started training there because when you're just in that, I like, I'm going to get spiritual on you here. Uh, when you're just in that like vibration of uh, experiences where everybody is just tuned in and all trying to go for the same goal, you really feel like everything in life has been solved. Like every question you've ever had, any problem you've ever had, it's just, it's all nice and serene at that moment. And you know, I, I like to not be dwelling too much on the past, but that's one past that I definitely ex uh, love the experiences with. So, um, you know, shout out to the uh, Jackson Wink crew right there. Uh, while I was in New Mexico, though, I also trained at another awesome gym. Uh, it's called Jackson's Akama. Uh, this dude, Nick Urso, owns the gym. Awesome striking coach. We got uh, uh, Groovy Lando. You probably heard of him. Fucking highlight king right there. Um, my, one of my old teammates, Jesse Morehouse, he's going to be fighting soon, actually, too. So uh, we got a lot of up and comers, um, you know, shout out to Sophie and uh, Maya out there. But um, as far as the training out there goes, I really liked the gym's uh, camaraderie sense as well. Even though not everybody out there on the mat is, um, I would say, like going for the same, like, you know, pro fight level um, status as far as like, you know, how hard they're training, you still feel that sense of camar uh, camaraderie because everybody, no matter what's going on, you know, maybe they got like family problems at home, maybe, you know, work troubles, you know, maybe, I don't know, uh, maybe they're having like uh, crises or whatever. Everybody ends up coming in and leaves it at the door and just puts in the work and you really just have to respect no matter where you're at in life, being able to go and just have that mentality of no matter how hard it is, I'm just going to keep on working for it. I'm just going to keep on moving forward, you know, fuck everything else type of stuff, you know. But, um, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to go and train there again soon. Um, I, by the way, during the uh, coronavirus pandemic, they were running Zoom workouts. And I got to say, I can't tell if I worked more hard in person or over Zoom because those guys know how to run a workout. I tell you, <laughs> felt like you were absolutely dead after every practice. I, <laughs> there would be times I'd just be sitting in my garage, just like five, ten minutes, you know, during the summer. Mosquitoes are picking at me and I'm like, ah, I can't get up. You know, is this how I'm going to die? I'm just sitting there waiting for the strength to return to me and uh it was definitely a time but um those were the new mexico experiences there um i also got the experience to tra uh, train in uh las vegas as well so uh the first time i went there was during international fight week so it was definitely a lot of stuff popping up around there um i stayed with one of my old teammates uh serena de jesus um the Southpaw Outlaw. She's an awesome teammate. Really love her. Uh, we actually both trained together while um, I was living in Philly. Um, when I first started jiu-jitsu, uh, I would say um, I was like, I want to say 16, 17. She was probably one of my main training partners there. Like this girl, I tell you, no matter what position you would put her in or she would find herself in, there was no way you would be able to get a submission on her. Like this girl was just like balls to the walls, always going to be work outworking you. Like you just honestly felt like she was always a step ahead of you. So um, having teammates like that was always nice. And then what Seeing her be able to go and excel in her MMA career has only made me, uh, has only motivated me more for my own career. So being able to see teammates thrive and succeed, like, ah, man, I tell you, it just really pumps you up right there. Um, but I was staying with her uh, during International Fight Week, and I also got to meet her uh, roommate, Roxanne Monteferri. I got to say, she, so I knew that she was awesome just based off of, like, her uh, social media posts and, you know, uh, her fight attire, cosplays, that type of stuff. Like, I knew she was going to be cool, but, like, really getting to know her, being able to train with her, like, ah, man. Like, when you talk about, like, you know, meeting someone uh, on a, you know, off chance or just meeting, you know, uh, 
you know, random people out of nowhere. Like, she is one of those people that I'm not saying is random, but, like, it's just a true light in your life. You know what I mean? Like, those people that are just so full of bright energy, you just really appreciate them. And you appreciate what life has to offer as well. So um, being able to have a teammate like that, I've also been very thankful for. Um, she... I don't know how to explain it. She has this way of being able to go and show you the things that you need to work on without you making without making you feel like uh, what you're doing thus far hasn't gotten you, you know, to a good standing. You know what I mean? Like she's able to go and like uh, put in a way that like you really feel like you can learn and uh, evolve from. So uh, I love having people like that in my life and uh, just all the people I was able to train with the syndicate. Um, man. That's just a room full of killers, dude. I tell you, like, no matter what day you go in there, like, everybody, and I mean everybody, has got their one special style. And whew, no matter how think, how good you think you are, like, there's always going to be one style to rival you or some awkwardness that you're going to have to adjust for. And I tell you, those people will always be evolving, always be thriving. And um, I just can't wait till the next time I get to go there and train with them. So... But that was my experience uh, over the summer as well, being able to train with them again. Um, I was hoping to hopefully have a fight while I was out there, but unfortunately, timing didn't work out. Um, so we weren't able to make that happen. But I was able to have a jiu-jitsu competition, was super happy about the results and uh, what I was able to gain from it, especially a new sponsor. So uh, shout out to PES, Result Driven, uh, <laughs> uh, excuse me, Supplements. Um, they were able to help me a lot during my weight cut as well. Uh, I ended up getting sick like the week of the, uh, tournament. So I was like, oh man, this is awesome. You know, like I'm just going to be like going in there, like half strength while cutting the weight. Perfect. You know, it sounds like a great time, but, um, it ended up going okay at the end. Um, I think the main issue was not being able to have, uh, I don't know, a, corner with me at that time but you know sometimes things don't work out so but we end up uh moving forward and making the best of it so for sure and uh you know i wanted to get into making your pro debut you were set to make it i believe in early 2020 something happened with the show or or yep. the fight what is your plans now like you're recovering from this injury but i'm pretty sure you have a timeline of when you want to turn pro yes so the main issue at the moment is the bunions, as I said. Um, we're recovering from the left one right now, but I'm planning to get the right one done in December. Um, by the time I hit this, we hit December anyways, the left one should be 100%. Um, as soon as the right one heals, which should be like mm, early to mid-May, uh, we'll jump back in there with training as soon as we can, and hopefully within four or five weeks we hear some news and we get after it. You know, I think at this point, like I've been kind of waiting for a good opportunity to get this pro debut on, but at this point, I just got to go for it. Like you only get one MMA career, and the older you get, the less opportunity. Well, not less opportunity you have, but uh, less time you have to work with whatever uh, gifts you were given for the sport. So I'm just trying to go and get out there and show everybody what I can do. I wanted to ask you one more thing. Top five Blasian athletes in your mind. Oh, the out. athletes. Okay. All right. All right. All right. <clears throat> Number one, I'm going to have to give it to my girl, Naomi Osaka. Okay. Now, I, personally, I'm not a big tennis fan. That would be more my grandfather. My grandfather is a huge tennis freak. Won't stop talking about it. We, we should have him be your next uh, <laughs> guest, actually. Um, but there's something about the way you carry yourself as a person. And she just has this way of not just not giving a fuck, but just being able to go and be okay with whatever decision she makes. There's a lot of power in knowing who you are as a person and trusting the decisions you make. So I really respect people like that. Um, so yes, all the, all the, uh, power to her there. Hmm. Number two. Who to give this one to? I don't know why, but I seem to be spacing on Blasian athletes right now. Who would be a good pick, at least from your uh, opinion? Heinz Ward. Heinz Ward? The, Who's uh, this? the football player? 
Oh, I'm not a big football plan or player, but tell me about him. Okay, What's he's his? he's uh he's a Super Bowl MVP with the Ooh, Pittsburgh okay. Steelers. Um, did really well. Had a good career. Actually, was a quarterback that turned into a receiver. Uh, yeah, a legend, I think. A Blasian wow. legend. I will definitely be yeah. checking him out. Okay, you, you with, I'm sorry for not knowing who you are. Please forgive me. <laughs> what about Benson Henderson? Oh, well, of course. Oh, my gosh. How could I have forgotten that? Yes, <laughs> Mr. Benson Henderson. By the way, I got to say, when I was training at MMA Lab, I really, and I mean truly, 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 did not soak up the good uh, enough good vibes from that man. Like, that man, first of all, was probably one of the most amazing teachers I could have had for my blast double leg in my arsenal. Um, that man, I tell you, first of all, the watermelon legs, uh, <laughs> they definitely inspired me to be more, uh, at least cut in the uh, leg department there. Like I tell you, that dude's walking around with freaking like meat packets full of legs. But um, yeah, no. so it's interesting actually that we bring him up. Um, the first time I went to MMA lab, was probably the summer of 2015 uh and that was just for i think a couple day visit he wasn't there for any of the days he must have been out of town or something i was like ah oh, dang all right that sucks <laughs> the second time we went which was for uh orientation uh well when i was initially going to asu i was going to uh freshman orientation and i uh, went over to the mma lab and i guess he just finished his last class of the day i'm like ah oh, dang again like am i never gonna meet this guy third time's the charm though however so i remember i came in for classes uh, one of the jujitsu classes there and i'm looking out at the window you know i guess it was like a beautiful sunset or something and the man just walks in and i tell you like the hair man the hair that was the whole vibe right there the hair was like fucking rustling in the wind you know uh, wind breeze must have gone through i'm like oh dang dude this is the most ideal blasian athlete right here this is the <laughs> pinnacle of blasianness right here i gotta I gotta take some notes man i gotta find out what he's doing but Ah, oh, man, I have so much respect for the guy, not only for what he's done for the sport, but also, like, he gives me a role model to look up to. He gives me somebody that I really want to strive forward towards. And I know, you know, they say, don't meet your own heroes and whatnot, but the man's the real deal, okay? Granted, I could do without the gospel rock for uh, warm-up music, but that's just me, okay? I don't want to go and be, you know, start no fights or anything like that, but uh, gospel rock is for some people, just not for me when it comes to warm-ups, you know? More of a, uh, you know, give me screamo, give me, you know, fucking, uh, even, you know, a Barbie girl song, give me some of that, you know, I'll go and warm up to that, but, uh, you know, there's only so many times you can hear Jesus in a song before it really starts, uh, you know, getting at you. So, <laughs> all right, all right, but, you know, to each his yeah, own, to each his own. Yeah, yeah, to each their own. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Hey, um, we could finish that list another time. Um, yeah, man, hopefully, uh, you do get recovered quickly, get lined up for a fight, and then we'll speak again, man, ahead of your pro debut. I just wanted to get you on, catch up, just know about you a little bit, and, and you know, get the people to know who you are. Thank you so much, Justin, man, for taking the time today. And uh, good luck on everything that's going on in your life. I appreciate it, man. And before you go, I just wanted to go and wish you a awesome, hopefully not only week, uh, or not only Sunday night, but also an awesome week. Um, I know oftentimes, you know, we go into the week kind of with these attitudes of like, all right, you know, let's just get through it. But, you know, I, I truly want to go and send you the good energy and the good vibes for this week. I know you're going to go and kill it. And honestly, man, as far as MMA interviews go, I think you did an awesome job with this one. So I want to say I appreciate you, ha uh, you having me on. And uh, of course, you know, as always, wishing you well. Keep on killing it. All right.